it's 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 hard to give this talk in general. I mean, it's the reality. You know, there's I guess statistically at this point, it's 209 black men have been killed in 2014. We're only in October. What is October 3rd? Um, you know, this is this is the climate that we're in politically. Uh, but 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 let's be real that this is. A, an everyday occurrence. The murders um, and killing of youth of color, of young people under the age of 30, is has been a widespread um, issue that we have dealt with for decades. That it's come more to the to the surface. That there's modern technology that we can see and put stuff on a cell phone, and and rebroadcast that around the world or what have you. That it can get. You know, I was just talking to Tessa about of of how. Eric Gardner's murder is captured on videotape and way before his name was even mentioned in the press, people in the community had already spread his murder and captured him being choked to death on, on, on videotape. And with that said, you know, what, 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 what is, if anything, empowering about being able to talk about police brutality is the fact that there is, there is Ferguson that consistently since August 9th, people have been in the streets, that people have decided that they will not in any way, shape, or form let go of this struggle and make sure that there is justice for Michael Brown and all the various people that have, have died around police brutality. And I think that that is, that is key. One of the things that, um, as we know, we can talk about right here in New York, you know, Sunset Park, Perfect example, history of, of police brutality, and again, and, and as well as uh, attacks from, um, you know, from as well as from ICE. I mean, the, the raids that have gone on there, the the brutality has gone on there. So, folks know, two weeks ago, which was it was basically like a, a block um, party on Fifth Avenue. It was interesting too. I, I now stay in Sunset Park and was there and wasn't sure why there was this immense holdup that had happened. We couldn't get through the streets. It wasn't about the block party. It was about that they, the, the NYPD at the end of the block party kicked a um, well-known vendor that's there every night. You know, it wasn't just for this block party that they were having on Fifth Avenue, but was a vendor that people knew in the community, people are used to coming home from work and eating at this person's stand, was kicked. Um, by the NYPD and because the community mobilized, because electeds in the community were held accountable by the community, this, this cop was then suspended. Within days, there was, a, again, NYPD in Sunset Park plant on a young person who had just come back from, unfortunately, had been in, had been in jail. Do we need a moment? All right. Had, had just been incarcerated, had come out with his family, you know, living his life, and the police, again, stop and frisk, ask to see ID. See the ID, and, and mom is there, pregnant, um, I believe seven months pregnant, someone correct me if I'm wrong. Um, here's the police say, you know, now we're going to make this stick, and sees and witnesses them put some kind of blade in his back pocket. She's like, oh no, this is not going down like this, and the and she tries to intervene for her her child's you know safety and not wanting him to go back to prison. Not because we know that they plant, they do. They, there's always we. There's a whole mean about all the mysterious ways that, particularly for black and uh, Latino youth, that there are guns planted, there are knives planted. All of a sudden, there's you know that they the police will come up to you and say, what did you put in your bag? And it could have been a soda can, but all of a sudden it's something else. What did you drop in the bushes? What all of that that happens. She was clear she was not going to have her son go back to prison over something being planted on him. The police then throw her down in the street. We, we say we, we, there are actual, they use a taser to her stomach. Visibly pregnant woman. Taser her stomach. Our other friend jumps in. We see another woman thrown and rolled. There's videotape of her rolling in the sidewalk. 
And that, I think this is the thing. So what has happened? That the police, that the police, again, this is historically what they have done in Sunset Park. But again, because of videotape, because of activism, folks, a march happened last, last I believe, like, you know, 500 people marched in Sunset Park around police brutality. There was a town hall that just took place on Wednesday. And again, there's more organizing that uh, th around police brutality happening in communities. <coughs> With this said, let me... With this said, I want to talk um, particularly because this is this is I mean I want to talk about um, John Crawford for a minute because right now actually the, um, we are now um, you know in a, in a day of action that's actually started today in um, in uh, uh, in Ohio um, as people know about John Crawford's case uh, again uh, 22 years old uh, was talking on walking in a Walmart talking on the phone. Uh, uh, to um, the to the the woman who is that he co-parents with, she he's un you know unassumingly just picked up like a toy gun. He's walking around the store. No one else now. There's video footage. I hope people have seen the video footage, where clearly no one else is bothered. No one is thinking anything of it. But there are folks trailing him, and again, we're still waiting for some kind of arrest or some kind of, um, you know, like, them to be brought up on charges, but if trailing him around, call the police, and have John, basically from the videotape, there was no conversation. We see him turn around for two seconds and is shot. He was executed, and we should say that. He was executed in the store for walking, for walking while black. Not in any way, there's not even people near him. There is no way that he is menacing anyone. Any of their stories that they want to pretend that that was happening was, he was executed. Seconds. And again, there's a whole project that's been done about the last, so three last words. So for Eric Gardner, it was, I can't breed. For John, for John Crawford, it's, it's not real. That they're, that they're looking at that the three last words of people who have been murdered and executed by the police and, and what, what the, the understanding of it, you know, hands up, don't shoot. This is what we're, what we're talking about, that people are being executed by the police and, and that, and that, and that, and that our, our communities are left to recover. So October, uh, so September 22nd, there was a, uh, uh, there should have been, and again, the, the typical, you know, this is, we see this time and time again. There's a grand jury, they're going to decide whether the cops are going to be, you know, actually accused of something. They, they're clear that they murdered these young people. And again, there's no, there's no charges brought to them. And, and the same thing happened with John Crawford. The same thing has happened with K Kamani Gray here in Brooklyn. It's Molly Graham. We can name, name person after person that this happened with. So the students, the student organization, Ohio um, Student Association, they had a march um, in line with the September 22nd. They went from the Walmart, it's, I believe it was 11 miles, that they marched from the Walmart to the, um, to the courthouse where the, the cop that killed uh, John Crawford was quote unquote supposed to be indictment. And we know we have no, um, we, know, we, we have no, no faith in the, in the justice system happening in this. But what they, what they have done now is called a week long vigil at this point in time where they in fact starting today, they have started marching and protesting at that Walmart. And they have already started in line that they, it, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit really quickly, actually, I know because the main, I want us to get to the Ebola um, video, but the, the main thing is that there, there is so much that people are, even if people can't get to, um, to uh, Ferguson, there are solidarity actions coming, whether it be the caravan that is going to the border of Texas and that they're, you know, what is the, don't shoot, what is it, what, I'm sorry, hands up, don't deport, is the slogan. In solidarity with Ferguson, that 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 our that our our, our friends and comrades in the May First Coalition, and others in the movement, Pastors for Peace, have come up to show solidarity. Um, in the same way that these students in Ohio have decided that they're having a week-long vigil until the 13th themselves, out in front of that Walmart and continue this protest for a week. They've already, there's, there's articles, it's very, very good, so people should read about this because again, and support them. There are also solidarity actions, if I'm correct, there's also Milwaukee, Milwaukee, um, 
and other places that people want, as well as there are folks going down to Ferguson. So we'll keep it in that. The, the one thing I wanted to just uh, to, to wrap up with, and I'll talk more about the Ferguson piece, is what is going on in Ferguson. And I just got off the phone with some activists there. Um, you know, it, it, is a, it is a heavy thing that, and, and to, you know, to their credit, it, it's so important that they have continued. As folks probably know that last, on the, uh, on the 23rd, um, you know, of September, Mike Brown's shrine, his memorial was burned. You know, that's, that in the middle of the night, I believe the, 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 the fire engines came at like 645, that they, someone had the audacity. Now they're trying to say, oh, it was the candles and all of this kind of thing. Not true. And in fact, there's beautiful pictures of the police that arrived there with fire extinguishers and stood back like this and allowed that, that memorial to go up stood like and they wrote a written apology and said oh no we did all in our power to make that to make sure no 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 your officers stood like this and watched that memorial burn but within 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 seconds the community got teddy bears got whatever like any posters whatever and they re they re you know reconstructed the memorial within seconds the community was like oh no because again, I, and I've talked about this before, is the fact that even in the first days of his death, the police came back and rode down the street and ran over. Any, his mom just tried to set up a candle, just tried to like acknowledge his death in the middle of the street. And the cops would come and roll it down. Any flowers, they said. So again, we're clear that this, obviously, this malicious, violent act is something that the, the, the harassment that the people of, of St. Louis is an everyday occurrence. In fact, there is now a, a $60, thousand dollar am I correct if it's sixty thousand dollars or sixty million let me make sure that I'm right on this is it sixty million I think it's a sixty million dollar um, lawsuit that is pending for the f uh, folks in the days just after his murder because of the, there's like eleven folks that are talking about the uh, the way that the the police the 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 the, the, the false criminal ways that the police harass the community and this is a, a, a really important thing we've talked about this before the, the bottom line for we have stop and frisk care in Ferguson in St. Louis, it's all about traffic violations. I mean, I, I've, I've talked about this before. I'll just, you know, it's, it's like if we are in the middle of, we got Harlem, we got East Harlem, and we got Washington Heights. They're all connected. But you have your own police departments for each and every single one of those places. That you have your own mayor for each and one of those places. Then you have the county. That you're literally driving around going, which jurisdiction is this? And how many, how many thousands and thousands of dollars do they make on, on violations, just like with broken windows here? All the quality of life um, uh, violations that people in New York City have to deal with and the way that the police make their money and their quota here. Well, there's, at this point, there's been, because of particularly traffic tickets, there has now been 220 um, warrants that have, people have gotten amnesty for these traffic violations. They say non-violent, we're talking about traffic violations, 220, and this is due to the struggle there that people has now gotten amnesty to say that this is like, no. Stop ticketing people. Stop this uh, targeting people driving while black and brown in in um, in, uh, in in St. Louis and in Ferguson and the surrounding areas. And again, with it, with the understanding that they have now brought the sixty million dollar lawsuit for people. Literally, again, the, the, there's one story of a woman who was there. They they tell po people to disperse. They're in the McDonald's, a very famous um, West um, Florent where most of the protest happens. She's standing there with her kids inside the McDonald's and they said you need to disperse. She's like, well I'm waiting for a ride, someone's coming to pick me up. They, you know, they arrest her. I mean, that's the kind of thing we're talking about. They harassed, they tickled people just for standing around. There's all of these articles coming out about how people just on a day-to-day -day basis in Comfort Gardens, that, that you're walking down the street and the cops go, where are you going? In your own neighborhood, where are you going? And that's, and this is the kind of level of harassment that again, fuels the flames of what is happening in, in, in Ferguson and why people will not let this issue go because of the level of racist repression that they experience on a day-to-day -day basis. And to their credit, they're taking over their city council meetings, they're calling for the ousting of every single politician that has anything to do, whether it be the police chief who is, is sort of a keystone cop. He's fun to watch. Watch him. Was it, it, it Thomas Jackson? Was it? Tom Jackson. Tom Jackson. He is fun. He is fun. So when are you going to arrest, uh, you know, Darren Wilson? Whoa. I mean, like, it's just, 
I mean, and again, I think mean, eight protesters arrested. You know, I, I, I still don't even get it. Here's, I mean, like, I, I mean, like, this is, this is a place where, you know, we went, when we were there, the NAACP had a march, and the police were on the front banners. We might not see that here, but there, that's, that's happening, right? The community is late at night. The community is out there. They are marching, and they, they question Tom Jackson. We have this videotape that we've been showing. They question Tom Jackson, and he's like, you know, he does his whole little thing. We don't know whatever's going to happen, and of course, people know. They leaked what was going on with the grand jury about Darren, with Darren Wilson, I mean, um, around Dar Darren Wilson's case. So now they've, they've thrown that out. And we're still waiting for whether or not, you know, again, is he going to be indicted? But the, here's the thing. They get, extend this olive branch so graciously and say, come march with us. Come march with us. Come be with us. Come be with the people. And what do the cops do? They attack them and arrest eight people, including reverends. I mean, it's just, the, so they wonder why people are like, we will not stop protesting. They wonder why people are like, we're taking over bridges. So, so the day of the, 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 the week of activism that's coming up is kind of awesome. I have to say, comrades. So it starts off, in fact, we're, we're not going to be here there. So three, it's like sometime around um, on, the, on the Friday, they have an action that they're going to be doing. Make sure that I get this right. So that's going to that's gonna be an action that's going to take place in Clayton, Missouri, where this is like the seat of their power, where the... Where the um, with the courthouse and all of that is. The next day is a mass demonstration. They're looking at that as a national march on Saturday. Um, on Sunday, it's it's like it's it's hip hop and and, and hip, hip hop and power and it's and it's it's all clergy. You know, this is a, a way to like have the clergy be down with stuff um, on Sunday. But then on Monday, it's Moral Monday, and in solidarity with North Carolina, they're doing civil disobedience starting 10 o'clock in the morning. They, they have already said that they want to shut down, you know, highways or whatever they're going to do. We don't know. There's a, but it's, it's, it's the clergy that's taking this on. And then there's other actions that no one knows anything about, which is kind of very awesome. They, they, they've sort of put this out, that there's just, we should just be prepared. And really, we should be prepared. If, you, if we're not in Ferguson, we also need to be on Facebook and Twitter. We need to be near our fax machines or what we do. Do we use fax machines no more? Email, whatever we're on. So Social media because we want to make sure the word gets out. We want to make sure if they need solidarity or support, whatever, we need to be there and doing whatever we need to do because Monday is going to be a big day um, in the struggle. So anyway, with with all of this said, I mean, and I and I think this is you know, lastly, it, it it's it's when everything is said and done, and we and and we understand what racism in its truest form is. It is about it really truthfully. It's it's terror on in our class in every way, shape, or form. Because we could, you know, whether it be around housing and gentrification, whether it be around, you know, the way that our uh, migrant brothers and sisters are treated in this country, this is, a, this is an attack on all working people. This is, this, this, the, the police brutality is an at attack on working class people. And that, if, that, that we also have this opportunity coming up next week on, at, on the 8th to demonstrate. I, I wanna, I, I am not doing a damn thing on Oc October 8th, but being out in Columbus Circle. And I wanna encourage everyone to be there. That we can show and show every single, and it, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the level of, of, of power in this country, the CEOs are there, the, 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 the capitalists that exploit us in every way, shape, or form. If we can all be there on the 8th, it is so important to hold up the signs of police brutality, to talk about immigrant rights, to talk about gentrification, to talk about war, whatever, all the slogans that we need to, we need to be there October 8th to do that. Anyway, comrades, on to the 8th. Oh, yes. Oh. Oh, yes, I need to do that right now. Thank you, Monica. I also want to just say that we are trying to, we, Baltimore, I didn't even mention this. We have, we do have, so Monica and myself are traveling down Baltimore, folks, in the house right here. Nod your head, wave your hands, wave your hands. Baltimore folks are sending a van. North Carolina folks, I, these are black students, I, I, they, they're just like, and the party, but I mean like, they're just, they were like, Monica went down, I don't know what Monica said, but they were like, we're getting in a van, and they just, they're going, you know, they're like, they just said, like, they're packing up, and they started this trip, and so they're going, and so we want to fundraise for that, and in fact, I think buckets are going to go around in a minute, 
Okay, yeah, we got buckets. That's what that was my cue. I forgot my cue. I'm a bad actor. So my cue was that there is gonna be we need people to help fundraise to get Baltimore there. There and in fact, we're we're providing the van. There are all kinds of activists from all over the, the movement in Baltimore that are just coming because we said we're driving down. So we really wanna ask people to support. Quarters are great, dollars are great, twenties are amazing. Whatever you have, if you can help with that, it really will help make sure that people can like drive and be safe. Anyway, thank you comrades, and on to our other. <laughs>